What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another episode of the Never Seen It series where I give you my thoughts and opinions about movies I've never seen before in my entire life. Do I love them? Do I hate them? But most importantly, do I recommend them to you? There's always a best and there's always a worst. Everything else kind of just falls in between. So it feels like I haven't done this video in a really hot minute. And I really haven't because the last Never Seen It video was over a month ago. So I have a nice combination of mob films because that was my movie watching theme last month and also disaster movies. So that's what you're gonna see in this pile today, disaster films and mob films. So let's get started with the film I enjoyed the most out of the entire recent batch, and that's gonna be The Impossible. The Impossible with Naomi Watts and also Ewan McGregor. This is a disaster film about the largest tsunami on record, I believe at that time, or maybe it's still, the largest tsunami on record. This is about a family of five that goes on vacation during the holidays, during Christmas, and they get hit with a tsunami out of nowhere. No warning at all whatsoever. And the entire film, this family is trying to find each other. And miraculously, they do. I mean, spoiler alert, but this movie's been out for quite a long time. Plus, you could look up the true story online on Google if you guys wanted to. But that's the reason why it's called The Impossible because all five of these family members all survive and they got back to each other. It's an amazing film. Naomi Watts, I had to look up if she was nominated because I thought she was and she was. She just did not win. She puts out an amazing, incredible performance in this film. I highly recommend this movie. If you guys have not seen it, please put it on your to-do list to pick it up over on Amazon, Blu-ray.com, whatever you guys want to do. Definitely pick up this film. It is so worth watching. The range of emotions that you feel during this movie is absolutely incredible. Plus, you get a little baby Tom Holland. Well, not baby, but a smaller Tom Holland. And I do believe this is his movie debut. So, fantastic film. The Impossible. I'm so happy that I finally watched it. Let's move on next to I Gotta Have Sly. I pretty much talk about Sly Stallone in every single video that I do. I can't help it. I love the man. I don't know why. I just do. Daylight. I had to pick up Daylight. I was looking forward to watching this one for the disaster movie theme. And it, it fulfilled. It fulfilled all expectations. It's not the best disaster film on the planet, but it was entertaining. And Sly really plays a different kind of character in this movie. He kind of plays more subdued and not like over... It's not a really over-the-top character. I hate saying that his characters are kind of over-the-top because some... I don't know. They're just... In this film, he's just not, hey, look at me, I'm the star of this movie. It's more of an ensemble piece. I feel like this is more the direction I want to go in. So it's more of an ensemble piece, and he just fits right in there. He's not like, hey, I'm the star of this movie. I'm just in here trying to rescue this batch of people that's trapped underneath this, underneath this bridge. The flood is coming. I mean, you're really feeling it. I mean, pretty much every single worst case scenario happens in this film and Sly Stallone is trying to help this group of people navigate and get out of it. So I enjoyed this one. It took me a second to get there, but I got there. I enjoyed Daylight. All right. <laughs> Let's move on from Daylight to The Core. I watched this one just the other night this one is okay, like, I, very same with Daylight. It's not, like, blowing my mind with this film. It's a basic disaster movie that is just so ridiculous. Pretty much the center of the earth stops turning, so they have to, they have to get to the core of the earth to restart it, so that way the earth pretty much doesn't self-destruct, I guess is what it is. I don't know. I was kind of sleepy here and there, but... That's no surprise. You have Hilary Swank in this movie, Aaron Eckhart. Stanley Tucci, he's like in every movie I've been watching lately. I'm not really sure why, but his performance usually elevates any film that he's in. And it's very true in the core. So this is a decent disaster film. This recently came out as a 4K. 
And the transfer is okay. It's not like mind blowing or anything, but it was enjoyable. I will say it is a little bit more interesting than Deep Impact because Deep Impact, it's like you're waiting the entire movie for it to get to the point and then it finally gets there and at the very end of the movie you get all the action and the core, it's pretty much there consistently throughout the entire film. So I guess the core outranks Deep Impact. Then we have Deep Water Horizon. This one was really interesting because I didn't know the full on details of this true story. You have Mark Wahlberg that plays this character that works on an oil rig along with Kurt Russell and so many other characters. There's like over a hundred people that worked on this oil rig, the Deep Water Horizon. And BP, the oil company, just cheap cheapos they didn't want to perform a certain test and because they did not do that because they were pushing it to get what they needed to get the oil i was kind of like eh, iffy on the details of that but pretty much greedy corporation you know cutting corners and not doing what they needed to do resulted in tragedy because i believe 11 or 13 people died in this oil rig fire that happened it didn't have to happen if this company just did what they were supposed to do. This is a tragic, true story, but it was a great movie. Fantastic film, went by really quickly. It's under two hours, that's always a plus. So I enjoyed Deepwater Horizon. This one was good, I do recommend it for you. And you can get the Steelbook over at walmart.com for only $5. I believe it's just the Blu-ray Steelbook, but nonetheless, you can get a Steelbook for five bucks. Okay. I talked about Sly. Now I have to talk about The Cage. I always have to mention The Cage as well because I love Nicolas Cage too. So this movie, Knowing, start out really good. Starts off really good. It has this great concept of this little girl writing all of these numbers down in a certain sequence that makes sense to her, but no one else knows what this is. And this is like 50 years in the past and it gets buried in a time capsule. Fast forward to Nicolas Cage's son is currently going to said school where the time capsule is. They dig up the time capsule and his son is given this piece of paper with all the random numbers on it. And it just so happens that Nicolas Cage plays an MIT professor and he works out what these numbers mean. And what these numbers mean is all of these numbers are disasters in sequence and it's also predicting the future of what is going to come for disasters. So this film starts really strong with a great concept and we were into it. The entire family, we were watching this, Mama Blu-ray, she was digging it. But then this movie takes a turn where it becomes more sci-fi than disaster because you have aliens involved and the kids getting sucked into space to have them survive the disaster. And we didn't know how we felt about that. You know what I mean? Because it went from disaster to alien sci-fi and it just ended on a really weird note. So knowing was kind of like, eh, okay. It's not my favorite Nicolas Cage. It's certainly not my favorite disaster movie, but it was all right. I can't necessarily say that I recommend this one. So yeah, that's all I got to say. <laughs> I don't necessarily recommend this one. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's just weird. It was just weird. I wouldn't have put in the whole alien thing. I would have stuck with the plain disaster plot line and just gone with that. And if they made that the entire movie, it probably would have been one of my favorites of the pile. Next up is 2012 on 4K. This movie was sent to me by a subscriber. So thank you so much for sending this movie my way. It was really enjoyable to watch. Very much action packed. Like the end of the world is here and it is all throughout the entire movie. There's floods happening. Asteroids are hitting. Like everything possible happening to the earth is happening in this film. My one big negative about the movie is that I think it's too long. Like I was actually watching the clock at one point and I'm like, are we done yet? And it still had about half hour to go. John Cusack is in this movie. I love seeing him on screen. 
I want more of him. Like, where did he go? Where did John Cusack go? Like, he just kind of faded out a little bit, in my opinion. But I would love to see him make a comeback somehow, some way, because I think he's a decent actor. But yeah, this movie, my one big complaint was it was just way too long. But other than that, constant action. You're all over the place. You're trying to figure out you know, what are they going to do? It's completely ridiculous. It's completely, completely ridiculous. But most disaster movies are, let's be honest. So this one was enjoyable. Don't get me wrong. And it looked nice on 4k as well. All right. Now we are getting into some gangster films, gangster mob movies. So we're going to start off with the ultimate gangsters collection now this was from jasmine jasmine if you guys are brand new to my channel she is a subscriber that sends me mail all the time in fact i just picked up another box from her yesterday as well as my anonymous donor so there's going to be another unboxing video very soon <laughs> very soon here on the channel but circling back to this Jasmine sent me the Ultimate Gangster Collection or box set because she knew I wanted to do mob movies as a theme and she's so good she sent this my way. I watched three out of the four. I couldn't make all four happen but I loved watching these. They're pretty much all black and white movies. Very short, 70, 80 minutes long and they were just nice to experience because the history of movies, all of our current films come from someplace. You know, they all start from original films. And like I said, these are from the 30s and the 40s. These are like the original mob movies. So it's interesting to go back and watch these films that were the start of it all. Not saying that these were the absolute first mob films, but you get what I'm saying. My favorite, I will say, The Petrified Forest, because that does have a young Betty Davis in the film, as well as Humphrey Bogart. So that was my favorite out of the three that I watched, but I still have to watch White Heat from this collection. But I really enjoyed this. So Jasmine, thank you so much for sending this one my way. I really had a great time with it. I recommend you pick it up if you can find it on sale somewhere, blu-ray.com, I don't know. All right, American Gangster on 4K another great gangster film. Denzel Washington is playing like the king of the neighborhood. He was working as kind of like, I guess, an assistant to like the king of the neighborhood. And then the king of the neighborhood or the gangster of the neighborhood passes away. So Denzel Washington's character steps up and goes into that role and he just kills it. Absolutely kills it. Russell Crowe, great in this movie as well. He plays a cop trying to, you know, navigate and figure out how they're going to take down, you know, the head of the neighborhood. These two as actors really don't have a lot of screen time together in this movie. Right towards the very end is where they start acting together. And when you have two great powerhouses going up against each other on screen, that's always a wonderful thing to watch. And these two just have some kind of chemistry with each other. And I love seeing them on screen. And this is a true story, by the way. Just to let you guys know, highly entertaining. I didn't know how I was going to feel about this movie. Plus, it is longer. I believe this one is like three hours. Yeah, it's two hours and 38 minutes. The extended version is almost three hours. But I can tell you, even though it is long, you really don't feel it because it's constantly moving. The story is progressing. So I highly recommend American Gangster as well. If you guys have not seen it, it is a good one. Up next, we have Johnny Depp in Public Enemies playing John Dillinger. So this one was just okay. For some reason, I just didn't grab on and latch on to this movie like I thought I was going to because I love Johnny Depp. I love him as an actor, and I think he's just really good at what he does when he's focused and he's in that role and he just takes it on. But I don't know. For some reason, even Mama Blu-ray. I asked her when we were done with the movie, I was like, what'd you think? She's like, eh, like, eh, that was it. <laughs> she didn't have anything else to say about the film other than, meh, it was all right. And I kind of feel the same way. It was just meh. I will say it was interesting to hear John Dillinger's story, but as far as like the actual telling of the story, it wasn't as strong as other mob films, but I'm happy I have it in my collection. I am. All right. 
this one became one of my favorites and that is Carlito's Way. Al Pacino and Sean Penn. Talk about two powerhouses acting together. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. I feel like this is one of Al Pacino's best roles for some reason. I, he just oozes charisma all over the screen in this movie. I know he does in a lot of his films, but this particular role, for some reason, I was like, wow, I'm actually digging Al in this movie. I've never said that. Like, I dig Al Pacino. I was digging him in this movie. Standard mob film, Al Pacino, you know, was the head of crime in that neighborhood. He gets pinched. He goes to jail. Sean Penn plays his lawyer, gets him out of prison. So now he's trying to keep his nose clean. He doesn't want to go back to prison. He doesn't want to go into that bad lifestyle. He's trying to go legit. And it's kind of like him navigating. And this is the story of that. So I really enjoyed this one. This one I feel is maybe kind of underrated. I don't know. I don't feel like I hear a lot of people talking about Carlito's Way, but it's fantastic. Great movie. Great, great movie. All right, I have a criterion. It is Miller's Crossing. And I don't have a lot of things to say about this movie because I tried watching this twice and both times I fell asleep. So I'm not really sure if that says the movie is boring or I just tried watching it at really bad times. So I'm going to put it away. I will revisit it in the future, but Miller's Crossing, so far, it's not looking much like a winner, I do have to say. If I fell asleep twice and pretty much in the same exact spot, that's not a good sign. So I will give it a second chance. I will, but I got to take a break from it and I will circle back to it at a later time. Gangster Squad, all-star cast here. You have Sean Penn as our crime head. You have Emma Stone as his girlfriend, Ryan Gosling. You have Josh Brolin as the head of the Gangster Squad. Apparently, this is based on a true story as well. A lot of these are based on true stories, but this is back in LA, I believe in the 30s, I want to say. 1949. Okay, I don't know decades at all whatsoever. So 1949 in LA, true story of a gangster squad that was created to take down a certain mobster. That is pretty much the entire crux of the story. You don't really need to know anything else. Again, it was just okay. Very much like Public Enemies. It just didn't really grab me like Goodfellas grabs me. Casino grabs me like it just for some I don't know for some reason it just didn't really fully have my attention I was thinking like should I check my phone you know what I mean like that's not good if I'm thinking that so this one was just just average just okay all right oh I have two copies in here because <laughs> it's the untouchables and I have the steel book and also the 4k let's show off the 4k here we go the 4K of The Untouchables. Again, another true story because you have Elliot Ness with his gangster squad trying to take down legendary Al Capone, played by Robert De Niro. Sean, Pe Sean Penn, Sean Connery is in this movie. He won Best Supporting Actor. I did not realize that. He won Best Supporting Actor for this film. I believe he deserved it. He was fantastic in this movie. This one was fun. It was good. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It, it was like mid, but like higher mid, I guess. Really enjoyed it, but wasn't like super fantastic. But I enjoyed The Untouchables. I will. I did. It'll be a good rewatch. There we go. Blah, stumbling on my words again. Okay, here we go. The Outfit. The reason why I picked up this movie was solely based on Tim Talks Talkies. Tim was saying how good this movie is. So I trusted his opinion. I picked it up on sale at Blu-ray.com. I think it was like 12, 10, something like that. Really cheap, reasonable price. And I wanted to watch it anyway. So we have, oh, what's his name? Mark Rylance. Famously stole the Best Supporting Actor win away from a man Sly Stallone, but I will forgive him for that. <sighs> Anyway, I'm still bitter. 
Mark Rylance, again, like Stanley Tucci, he's so good in pretty much every single role that he is in. He's the lead character in this movie. He plays a tailor, which is kind of like a front for the mob to do their business in his tailor shop. And it's kind of the events of this movie, they just start going and it starts unraveling in front of you and there's twists and there's turns and then there's a major twist later on in the movie that I did not see coming. And I love when movies can surprise me. So the outfit was definitely a pleasant surprise. It's not a film I'm going to watch over and over and over again like Goodfellas. I could watch it anytime, any day of the week, like no problem whatsoever. The outfit, not so much, but I did enjoy it and I do recommend it. If you can get it on sale, $10 or less, definitely pick it up and grab it because it is a good solid film. Okay. Now we talked about Al, we talked about Johnny, but now we have them together in Donnie Brasco. And this is another true story because we have Johnny Depp who is undercover in this film as obviously he's what is he FBI or something he's FBI undercover yes FBI undercover posing as a jewel broker I'm re I'm reading the back of this because it's been so long since I've watched this movie he plays a jeweler he's FBI and he's he's an FBI he's FBI <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to film this over again so we're just gonna go with it he's FBI posing as a jeweler he ends up working for Al Pacino's character, who is a mobster. There we go. I got it right. And pretty much it's just mob activities per usual in this movie. That's it. And it's very tense because the entire movie, you're sitting on pins and needles wondering, is he going to get caught? Of course, with these films that are true stories, I don't Google them to find out what happens. I want to be surprised when I'm watching the movie. So constantly you're on the edge of your seat with this one on pins and needles. Is Al Pacino going to find out who he really is? Is the secret going to be blown? Because there's a lot of moments in this movie where his cover is almost blown, but then, you know, things are fine and things are good. Oh, it gets away again. So it really does leave you in suspense with this film. I enjoyed it. It's one of the better new mob watches that I I did watch last month, so I highly enjoyed Donnie Brasco, and I look forward to watching it again. All right, now we get to the worst of the mob gangster films, and without a doubt, out of all of these mob movies that I was watching, the worst of the mob films is Harlem Nights, and I am just so disappointed to say it because I like Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor is also in this film. Hello, comedic genius. Two powerhouse comedians together. But I knew this film was going to be an issue right when it opened because it's all about Eddie Murphy's ego. Directed by Eddie Murphy. An Eddie Murphy production. Starring Eddie Murphy. Written by Eddie Murphy. I'm like, wow, seriously? And then the movie gets going. And it is just total ridiculousness. It is just so bad. It's just a bad movie. It is not good at all whatsoever. The acting is horrendous, which really surprises me because you had a lot of powerhouse actors back in this time period in this movie. A lot of them have passed away <laughs> at this point. But you have Della Reese, Arsenio Hall, Jasmine Guy. Red Fox. I mean, you have all of these great actors, Danny Aiello, in this movie, and it is one of the worst movies I have ever seen. I don't even know if I'm going to end up keeping this because I don't think I'm going to ever watch it again. I honestly don't think I'm going to watch it again. It was just so horrible. And that pains me to say it really, really does. Like, I bought this movie and Boomerang at the same time loved Boomerang. I thought it was a great film, great like romance movie. This is a hot turd, okay? Like this is so horrible. Stinking. The steam is rising off of Harlem Nights. Do not buy this. Seriously, don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. It is awful. But that's not the worst. That is not the worst of this pile. Can you believe it? All right, my bottom two are disaster films. 
let's get into this. We've got Earthquake. Surprisingly enough, this is not the worst. There is a worst one that I saw last night. Absolutely horrible. But Earthquake is almost there. First of all, you have such a large cast of characters. You are taking the majority of the time to kind of like get yourself familiar with these characters, where are they at in their lives. I don't care. I don't care about these characters and where they are like relationship wise or, or work wise. I don't give a shit. It's called Earthquake. Crack the earth. I want disaster. I want a disaster movie. Yes, eventually you do get there, but it takes forever. There's one, it, it really like, it's really bad for me to say that like I laughed during this film because obviously if you went through like, you know, horrific things in the past or you've had like PTSD, you would not find this funny. But like there's certain parts in this movie that are utterly ridiculous. Like there's one point where I think a bunch of people are trapped in an elevator and it just starts going down very rapidly because like the cords get cut and all that shit and the elevator just starts crashing down and... <laughs> It crashes, and when it does, there's a graphic of blood that, like, splats, and that's it. Like, you're just to assume that all those characters died because this, like, graphic of blood splatted, splattered all over the screen. What was that? I cracked up. I couldn't help it. Here we are having a serious moment of people dying in an elevator, and then you throw in a graphic of blood and I end up laughing hysterically. So that moment is killed because you all of a sudden turn Earthquake into a comedy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. And there was like little bits and pieces of that throughout the entire film where Mama Blu-ray and I could not take this movie seriously. Like we were laughing during this. You're not supposed to laugh during a disaster film, during a disastrous earthquake that's pretty much just destroying all of California or whatever the hell this was. So yeah, that's the reason why Earthquake, and because it just took forever to get to the actual action of the film. But that's not the worst. That is not the worst. The worst I watched just last night, and I should have known it was going to be the worst because I bought it from the Dollar Tree. <sighs> what was I thinking? It's Tidal Wave. This movie is stupid it is so bad it is so bad so as i said dollar tree pickup big huge mistake but yet i only spent a dollar on it so after this video when i throw the movie away and keep the blu-ray case not a big deal so i had like maybe a little bit of hope for this film because the title, it's called Tidal Wave, okay? We're going to have like another like tsunami kind of situation. All right, let's get into this. So I start the movie and it's one of those Asian films that is dubbed. Okay, I have a couple of those movies when I was picking up some shark films about a year ago. So I'm like, you know what? We watched a couple of those. Not a big deal. I can handle it. I have no problem with that. That's not my issue. My issue is, is that this movie is very similar to Earthquake because this movie is two hours long. This movie does not need to be two hours long. The reason this film is two hours long is because, much like Earthquake, it just gets into all the storylines, all of these different characters. And when I tell you all of these different characters, I'm talking about like 15 people minimum, possibly even 20. So we're talking about like this relationship over here, the son, the grandma, the friend, this couple's having, you know, turmoil over here. And then these people just met. They're having like this flotation. Who gives a fuck? I don't care. And I'm sorry I said the F word. I normally don't swear, but it is called for with this film. When I tell you a tidal wave did not come until an hour and 20 minutes, I'm not joking. I timed it an hour and 20 minutes. Finally, we get some tidal waves coming in and the tsunami hits over an hour and what? Why? No, no, it should not have taken that long. 
This movie should not be two hours. Honestly, with the with with everything that this movie lacks, this movie could have been 60 minutes. Easily. <laughs> easily. Just, you know, put the characters out there, have the tidal wave come in, have the tsunami come in. We're done. We're good. And that's it. All of this filler fluff material I did not need. This is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I know I'm never going to watch this film again. And this time, you know, I am flinging this goddamn thing because I just hated it so much. So that is everything that I've been watching for Never Seen It's Lately. Comment down below and let me know what you've been watching or your opinions about any of these movies that I just mentioned. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.